my parents had a small carryout, basically so Americanized Chinese food, lo mein, fried rice, egg rolls, you know, chop suey. I kind of thought at the beginning, it was kind of in an odd spot. To me, on the outskirts of Chinatown, close to downtown, close to the bus stations, and, and so they would get that kind of foot traffic. Uh, it was not meant to be a gourmet five-star Zagat rated. It was meant to be a means of income. And um, before they ventured into that, my mom used to work at Tai Tung as a uh, kitchen prep, working from 4 p.m. to about 4 a.m. And I remember, because she was very meticulous about jotting down her paychecks or whatever cash she got. And I used to sit there and say, wow, she makes $45 a week for almost 70 hours a week of work. So when she got this carry out, it gave her a chance to triple the income and, you know, a decent life, I guess, back in the 60s. You know, Chinese businesses don't close, not even for Christmas. We all know that. So there was someone always stopping by. And back then, when we had a restaurant, it wasn't just to cater to the tourists. It was to, for those people who lived in Chinatown also. And our population may not have been a lot, but it was probably a thousand people still living in Chinatown at the time. The Utah Grill was a restaurant on U Street that served Chinese food, typical Chinese food like uh, lo mein, fried rice, and egg roll. It was a small restaurant in a local area, very popular. I think my grandfather uh, was living upstairs of the restaurant, and then when my dad came back after serving the military, he had an opportunity to open a store in Chinatown, D.C., 6 and G Street. That store was Veterans Market. Uh, it's a typical Ma and Pa grocery store, and back then there was quite a few places like that have that. They sell typical groceries instead of this big supermarket nowadays, which they have those small Ma and Pa stores. The Metro had an eminent domain and took over 6 and G, and when my dad wanted to buy a, a store uh, in E Street, which is one block away after Metro took over. My grandfather was Charlie Lee. He ran a, a laundry business in, in Washington, D.C., and he brought my father over to help run the business. They had a sign up uh, out called uh, Vernon Lee Chinese Hand Laundry. The first laundry business was in 1408 North Capitol Street, and that was in the 50s. North Capitol Street was a main thoroughfare. It was the dividing line of um, Washington, D.C., and there was a lot of traffic and a lot of business there. The type of customers we had in the laundry business uh, was all black from the neighborhood and they would bring us clothes to wash. During the day uh, we had to go to school and this was during the school year. After that we helped out for about an hour or two with the uh, laundry. My dad had a washing machine in the back room and a, and a spin dryer and they call it a ringer. And we, we did work at night. And then during the summer, and especially when I got in my mid-teens, he had me doing the pressing. He taught me how to press. I hated it. It was hard work and it was sweaty, especially during the summer. The sun was shining through the window and I'm on the middle of this press, pressing the, the collar, the, the sleeves, the body. He had me learn all of it. When the economy went well, my father started a business in Northeast Washington, D.C. I think it was 12th and Gerard Street, Northeast D.C. So he had two businesses and hired someone from Chinatown to um, manage the business in Northeast. It was in a predominantly African-American, low-income neighborhood. And then later on, he started doing dry cleaning. So it became Fernley Laundry and Dry Cleaning. My family business stayed until my father passed away. It wasn't a, a, a lucrative business, it was a business that we could survive on. We didn't make a lot of money, but we can live off of it. And so he, he stuck with it until he passed away. My grandfather's brothers and he came over, originally opened a laundry. 
And then later, they sold the laundry and opened a grocery store named Miwa Long. One of the conditions early on for my grandfather to stay in the U.S. is that you could be a merchant. So they went into business bringing imported Chinese food to the area. Originally, they sold uh, dry goods and Chinese vegetables, and then they added on roasted pork, uh, a whole barbecue pig, chicken, ducks, hog maw, intestines. <laughs> My parents came in 1949 and they went to work for my grandfather and my uncle. So they worked very long hours. I think they worked from like eight or nine in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. And they get one day a week off. We all worked in a grocery store from the time we could walk. We had a small bean sprout business. We used to be put on little chairs to stand in front of the uh, warehouse area where we had bean sprouts and we would wash the bean sprout in cold water to get the, the shells off of it and then we would sell the bean sprouts. We made enough bean sprouts to sell in the store and locally to maybe about 10 or 12 restaurants. We did also sell to the Chinese Embassy. Our family grocery store was in business for about 70, 75 years before we closed. We closed because there was so much construction around our area for developers building these big buildings. My father bought this bean sprout store on 9th Street. And then later on, it was like 1951, that we bought the building on 6th Street. And so we grew bean sprouts, and we sold vegetables, and we all worked there. All the kids had to work. Yeah, we got our friends to work <laughs> uh, with us during the time. Just imagine a huge room with 200 trash cans in it. Metal trash, trash cans. cans. <laughs> that, that tall and this wide. And then they fill out with, uh, with mung beans on the bottom. And every day, like four times a day, with the water, the bean sprouts. Yeah, so we took turns. We saw our parents work. And my mother will water the bean sprouts and wash them. And then my dad will deliver to the local businesses. Like the restaurants, and then there's grocery stores. And then um, outside of Chinatown, they were mainly restaurants. We had the bean sprout factory same time we were running the restaurant for a couple years. My parents' restaurant was called the China Doll Restaurant. It was on H Street between 6th and 7th. It was the heart of Chinatown. It was mainly Cantonese style. After I graduated from University of Maryland, um, I started looking for jobs. And so I did have a couple of job offers, but my brother and my father, they insisted I should be working at the restaurant. So. I said, okay, I'll work in the restaurant for a year and see how, how it goes. One year led to another, and, and so I got stuck working at the restaurant, and then I had my five kids there, so, uh, so I stayed at the restaurant. So uh, I, I was working there for the last 38 years. <laughs>